Paul, this, uh, for those of you who have attended the ONF SDN workshops in the past at the Lair 123 events, this is somewhat of a departure because we have an entire day of activities planned this year. And um, the agenda that I showed is what we refer to in the program as the Euro Summit. Uh, the Euro Summit consists of the ONF SDN workshop, which is now until about um, a little after 3 o'clock this afternoon. Then we have a members only session scheduled for 3.30 to 5.30 and many of you are members so we invite everyone to participate in that. And then we have a uh, ONF Europe meetup. It's a reception where everybody's welcome and we can uh, relax a bit after a, uh, a productive and fruitful day learning a little bit about the direction of open SDN and open network functions virtualization. That, take pl that takes place at 5.50 p.m to 720, again, open to all, so certainly encourage those even who are not in the room to, to join us as well. First of, though on the agenda though is the uh, ONF SDN work, workshop that I am very pleased to be able to chair. This is my third year of organizing workshops at this event, so I feel really comfortable here and just wandering around the lobby, I noticed, I, I mean, there's just all sorts of uh, wonderful people who I've seen in the past, and it's just a really, really great experience. And I'm very, very happy to, uh, to have the opportunity to, to, to engage with the community directly. So throughout the day, we in, intend to address the state of open, the Open Networking Foundation and not only that, where we're going. Um, one of the questions we get all the time is, how is the role of ONF changing? And um, in this particular workshop, what we intended to do is to provide more insights and details on not the details, but the big picture as far as what the Open Networking Foundation's objectives are and what some of the progress is that we've made. And then, of course, we're going to talk at a little more technical level about some of the specific initiatives that are not just ONF initiatives, but they're industry initiatives driving the direction of uh, SDN. Uh, I also want to welcome the remote audience, and uh, we're really pleased to have you as well. We'll try to be a little uh, accommodating in terms of uh, our breaks and schedules to make sure that you uh, make the most out of your time. So thank you everyone from a, for attending. And um, this obviously will be a recorded as well, so you'll be able to uh, distribute uh, links to the, the final workshop for viewing afterwards. We tend to get five or so times as many people viewing these workshops after the fact than we do uh, for the live experience. But you, there's nothing like the live experience, so I know personally I will, I will uh, attend as many of these events as I can. We have a, today we have assembled an outstanding program of leaders from the ONF as well as the industry to be able to share their perspectives on, um, on a number of topics that are particularly relevant to the, to the overall community. And uh, we've involved everything from industry group leaders uh, open source project representatives, startups. We have a really excellent panel this afternoon to share some insights on what some of the more innovative companies are, are, are working on, as well as operators and network equipment manufacturers and software vendors who are actually creating the technology that we'll be deploying. A workshop like this is not even possible without a, uh, a team of people, many of whom are not in the room right now. But I do want to thank First, all of the speakers who have taken the time and <clears throat> effort to prepare, to travel here, to create presentations and prepare for panel discussions that make up this event. So thank, thanks you, many of them are sitting in the front row and they're gonna be wandering in throughout the, uh, throughout the day because there are some other activities ongoing uh, at the World Congress, uh, day, or at least day zero of the World Congress event. Uh, I also want to thank, uh, I don't see Mark here, but Mark Lum, he's the program chair for the SDN and OpenFlow World Congress. He has uh, been uh, phenomenally supportive of the ONF and has been our partner and has been someone who uh, I know I've learned a lot from just engaging on how to be able to put an event like this on on such a large scale since there'll be close to 1,400 people here or it could even be more by now. And then finally, I just want to thank every one of you. I mean, to come out on a, on a Monday for this workshop means that many of you had to travel over the weekend like uh, I know the speakers did. 
Some of the local people had to uh, maybe leave on Sunday. Thank you very much for taking the time and effort. We're going to try to make it worth your while. And, uh, and this workshop is obviously about you, because without you, we, we wouldn't have a workshop. So feel free to engage, to share your questions, and to talk with speakers, talk with me, talk with Dan, talk with the ONF leadership who's represented here after, the, uh, after this particular event. So before we get started, a few general announcements, housekeeping announcements. We have a morning break plan from 10.30 to 10.50. Lunch will be served from 12.30 to 1.30. And then we have an afternoon um, break immediately following the wrap-up session for this workshop. So there'll be plenty of opportunity to, to engage. And of course, I, um, it's very important to maintain a schedule, our schedule, because we do have quite a few sessions that are packed into our uh, our time slot. It seems on the agenda that it's a long time, but it flies by really quickly for those of you who've been here before. And uh, we would ask that uh, all the speakers and all of you just be attentive to the schedule. Please come back early from the breaks, at least a couple of minutes, so we can get started on time. I re we really appreciate that. And it's for the courtesy of the speakers and your fellow uh, workshop attendees. Um, we also welcome your questions and, and feedback. So um, we are very committed to be able to respond to what we hear from the community. And um, that's why we made some of the adjustments we did this year, is because of some of the feedback we had last year. Specifically, some of you who attended wanted to hear more about what the Open Networking Foundation is specifically working on, which is why we included a couple of presentations that get into additional detail, not just the big picture use cases and the value proposition that we've been uh, promoting for the last couple of years. Um, again, following the workshop, we, we would uh, love to have your, you to um, attend the, the reception that we have planned at 550, of course, members can attend the 330 session, and that's anybody who's involved with an ONF member, who, who's a, a member of an organization who is a member of ONF is welcome to the 330 session. And, um, and then, of course, afterwards, it's open to all at the reception at 550 to 720. And uh, the layer one, two, three people can direct you to the appropriate rooms. I don't have them with me. Um, I think the Constantine and Marcus room, like it's indicated here in this agenda, is where that um, meetup session will be. So, and for any other questions about the venue, certainly stop by the front desk. Uh, there's wonderful people from Layer 1, 2, 3 there, and they're very supportive and helpful. And um, certainly we'll be able to, uh, to, to help you find where you, what you're looking for or who you're looking for. So now what I want to do is review the agenda before we get into um, the, the, the presentations. Um, first of all, we're going we're to talk about how ONF enables the community. I, I tried to create a, a title that was encompassing a number of different ideas. It has to do with liaisons. It has to do with uh, engagement. It has to do with the role of software in the Open Networking Foundation, which is a hot issue inside and outside of the organization. And it also has to do with um, how, what is the role of, of ONF within the broader SDN and NFE community and ecosystem that's emerging and changing. Then I've asked Alex to come up and talk about China Mobile. And in a word, there are large carriers, there's super large carriers, and then there's China Mobile, who, has, who measures the number of subscribers in hundreds of millions. And Alex is going to talk about some of the exciting developments underway for a, an operator who's, who's deploying and, and, and really taking to heart the essence of open SDN and doing it on a, on a scale that's, that's mind-boggling. And then I'm going to ask Andy to come up. Andy Malice from uh, Huawei is the services area director. He's a part of the ONF leadership. He's been a part of the industry leadership for quite a long time with his other affiliations. And he's going to talk about the ONF architecture and some initiatives underway within the ONF services area. Um, next is going to be a panel discussion that will, uh, where we're going to bring leaders from the major industry groups and open source projects from spanning from Etsy NFE, OPNFE, Open Daylight, Onos, and, and, and actually, and, and of course the ONF, and, and actually show how each of these groups 
is approaching the problem and how they're engaging with the other groups. So it's a different kind of panel discussion, which we think that uh, we'll be able to help you understand better that big pervasive question. How, does, how is the ONF evolving to serve the needs of the community and to address our overall objective of promoting open SDN? We are then gonna break for lunch and um, that'll be at 12.30 to 1.30. For those of you in the remote site, you know, you'll have an hour to catch up on uh, whatever you wanna do. Uh, then I'm gonna invite Kurt Beckman, who uh, chairs the Open Data Path Committee, responsible for the open flow specification, to share thoughts on what the ONF is uh, undertaking in order to promote and support open flow and, and open SDN interoperability. And this is at a little more detailed level than some of the other presentations, but Kurt is, uh, is, is the best person I could think of to come in and really talk about how, how interoperability fits into a standard open source considerations, and then most importantly, how controllers and switches need to interact to be able to support the ultimate objective of enabling the open SDN ecosystem. Um, we're then going to have a panel to feature some of the uh, innovative SDN startups that are members of the ONF. And the really interesting aspect here is that if you think about most of your organizations, unless you're in one of these startups, you know, you're interested in SDN or you're interested in NFE and you're committed to it at some level. These organizations, their whole livelihood depends on SDN and NFE. It's a whole different level of commitment. It's make or break in essence for all of these startups since they're extremely committed and they've been a vital part of the overall ONF community, given the work that they've done, given the disproportionate representation, and given the commitment that they have and the passion they have for driving to our objectives. And then um, finally, after the, uh, after the panel, we're going to uh, have a brief wrap-up session, then a break, and then we're gonna proceed with the ONF member session. So with that, I'm gonna to ask to, to include the, uh, or start the, the next presentation. And I'm just gonna share a couple slides on, well actually, there's one before this, the, it's the introduction I think it's called. We have broken things down to, to make it easier for the conference admission. Yes. Oh, so another thing is since last year, I just wanted to flash this really quickly. I actually have a new affiliation. As many of you know, I was at Sienna Corporation, involved in their SDN initiative for quite a long time. I moved to a company called ClearPath Networks. We're one of those startups that's highly committed to NFE and SDN. Uh, based in Southern California, we're working on virtualized CPE. I just wanted to share with those who I haven't seen in a year that, about that move. It took place over the summer. I know some of, some of you who I've had a chance to see, it's sort of old news, but uh, it's new, still new news even for me. And uh, ClearPath is, I'm gonna be here and some of my colleagues are, we can surely share more details uh, offline. So again, welcome to the workshop. I mean, again, there's a few, um, few objectives that we have this year. One of them is to offer more insights on what the ONF is actually doing based on the leadership that's actually present within uh, within this community. Uh, there's some highlights that, uh, in essence, around the Open Networking Foundation's participation at this year's World Congress. The first Euro Summit, which is the day-long activities, we have a number of keynotes, presentations, and panel discussions, lunchtime debating tables. The ONF is, is, is one of the co-sponsors, or the primary co-sponsor for this event, and um, certainly involved with um, not, only, not only that, but a number of other activities like the ONF SDN Solution Showcase, which is the uh, opportunity for you to see these demonstrations of open SDN, multi-vendor, multi-technology, and, um, and, and with operator engagement. Operators defined as those who are using the technology versus the vendors who are creating the technology. We also have a major initiative underway to do ONF skills training and certification. And um, I see Doug in the background and Marco in the background. So they're gonna be conducting training. They're gonna actually beta uh, test the exam for certification. And you can learn more details by um, tracking one of their many sessions that's underway. 
so that you, you too can become a certified SDN associate or a certified SDN engineer. And then finally, if you look around the conference and you look at how many members are represented, you look on these logos, I mean, which most of them are, are, are ONF members, there are many presentations in this program and we welcome you to participate in all of them just to get a sense of what our membership is doing as well. This is just a summary of, um, I, I don't think it's 100% complete, but I tried to compile at least a list of the activities that are underway that the Open Networking Foundation is responsible for. Um, the keynote session that Dan has to open up the conference tomorrow, um, lunchtime tables. As I said, there's a couple presentations on the solution showcase and the Project Atrium, which is one of the ONF open source initiatives. That's on Thursday. And then there's um, participation in panels. Actually, Dan Pitt is in a panel with the Metro Ethernet Forum along with me, I think on Friday at noon or, or about. And then there's actually other, a couple other presentations as well that I learned about after this slide was finalized. So take a look, there's plenty of opportunity. The online program lists where the ONF is. Uh, it's an ONF session versus some of the member sessions. So please join us. So with that, um, what I wanted to do is to give you an idea who's participating in the workshop. And this chart just breaks it down by the individual uh, constituents that are represented. You know, it starts with operators and network equipment manufacturers who are primarily the key or, or large organizations that are members of the ONF. Uh, HP, Huawei, AT&T, China Mobile, Bro Brocade, well, AT&T is not a member, but China, China Mobile, Brocade, and then um, others are, 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 are participating this morning. The standards and open source community is very well represented with the leadership and senior leadership from all of those organizations, the ones I mentioned earlier. The startups you can see over here and you can get a little more information on the Open Networking Foundation or their company websites and even a couple of media and analyst individuals who are coming in to share their independent perspective. So with that, I'd like to go to the next presentation. But before we do that, are there any questions about the workshop or anything that uh, we've shared up to date before I just launch into the program? I guess not, so um, we will proceed. And um, so this is a session that talks about the ONF's role in the community. And where I wanted to start is just to, to take a snapshot of where is Open SDN, and for that matter, Open NFE, because the two initiatives, at least for many uh, telecommunication operators, are, are intertwined. It's not that they're separate anymore. I wanted to look at that, and then I wanted to just, just bring it closer to home and look at where is the ONF in 2015, how the ONF fits into the community, and then ONF and open source, because this is a big topic within the organization as well as with, uh, outside of it. And then just a, a brief snapshot on uh, ONF adoption. So this is a, a chart that should be familiar to anybody who's a, a Gartner customer or, or a Gartner follower. This is their hype cycle. This is the 2015 hype cycle for networking and communications. And as you might be able to read, because I know it's very difficult to see, um, there's three red lines on here. The, the one on the left is SDN applications that are rising up the hype curve. And then network function virtualization is sort of in the middle on the downward slope. Uh, after the peak of inflated expectations, these are Gartner terms that are very well defined, as well as software-defined networking, which is sort of at the bottom of the curve. Oh, thank you. So here's the arrow, but here's the point on the curve. Here's NFV, here's SDN applications. Exactly. So, so Gartner's perspective on this is that, that NFV and SDN is, is, is moving towards the trough of disillusionment, which is which is a necessary step toward adoption. But again, it's somewhat ambiguous as to exactly where and how that transition occurs. So we can look at this from a number of different perspectives. The one thing I noted on this year's hype cycle versus last year is OpenFlow isn't even on the chart. So I'm not sure if OpenFlow is, is, is actually considered in conjunction with SDN or, or is it off the chart or whatever. But it, it's somewhat of a cynical view of where SDN is at this point in time. But it's an influential view because Gardner has the ear of not only technology firms, but many of the enterprise customers who are either 
deploying networks themselves, they're purchasing services, they're the ultimate end user in the overall SDN and NFE uh, community. So we have to really pay attention to what they are getting, what they are hearing from the leading analyst and where we are. Now, I look at this a little bit differently, and then this is, a, this is an excerpt from a white paper and, and a survey, rather, that NTT Communications, again, one of the largest and most influential operators, uh, commissioned IDC, another leading research firm, to understand where, are, where is SDN and NFE with enterprise customers. So in other words, the operator, the telecommunication operator is looking at their customers to understand who is looking at managed NFE-enabled services and solutions. And when, and when we talk about NFE-enabled services and solutions, you can bet that SDN is underneath providing the dynamic networking capability to enable virtualized services. It doesn't just happen on its own. And if we look at this chart across Asia, the Americas, and Europe, it was a global survey, and you look at some of the numbers, and it's a little bit hard to read the legend, uh, there's a significant number of companies that are using NFE-enabled services, and, and by definition, SDN as well, now or within a year. It's, it's happening today, in spite of naysayers who are questioning whether SDN is real, whether we have real products, real services. The reality is, is that we're seeing signs, indicators. These are not conclusive quantitative numbers. These are indicators on whether or not this is real at some level. And if we look at this and we look at a, even additional survey data, you know, SDN, if we, if we don't focus on the broad NFE-enabled services, but we look at SDN, we see some big numbers that actually some of the analysts are predicting. And I had three or four other data points if I wanted to, to, to clutter the slide, but I just picked one from our good friend Michael Howard who's at IHS Infinetics, who's going to be here at the conference, who can, who can defend the numbers. Fortunately, I can just point to him. And, and then we also have a, a, a survey that F5 commissioned about why that number is a big number. What are enterprises, what are data center operators looking to gain from SDN? And it's no surprise. The biggest single driver is improving OPEX. It's not new revenues. New revenues is second, and it's certainly not CapEx, which is third. It's a close third behind incre increasing agility. One of the aspects that we've, we've learned is that the whole idea of agility makes sense, but it's difficult to rationalize internal to many organizations. CFOs are asking the right question. If I create new services, are we going to be able to deploy them and, and monetize them? I mean, they're not so worried about deployment. It's being able to monetize them. And the idea is that right now is that we need to justify the transition and transformational aspects of SDN and NFE through OPEX reduction first, and then be able to set the stage to offer new services. This is really a shift I think we've experienced over and observed over the last year or so. So now, so that gives you an idea of the backdrop. I mean, there's no 100% consensus on anything this broad in the industry, and certainly not about SDN and NFE. So I just wanted to, to, to share a few thoughts about how the ONF is responding. I mean, first of all, we're evolving as well. It's not just about open flow anymore. And this is what we've been hearing time and time again, no matter how hard we try, press, analysts, even customers who uh, are looking at deploying SDN and, OP and, and NFE technologies seem to have it stuck in their mind that the ONF and OpenFlow are somewhat synonymous. Now, we are at some level because the ONF is the champion for open SDN and, dry, and OpenFlow is a part of it, but it's certainly not the only thing that we do. One of the other main aspects that we're seeing is driving carrier-grade SDN. The carriers have had a huge influence, especially in Europe, in, in this market, it's, it's been very pervasive to see the interest level for driving SDN use cases and applications in the carrier community. The ONF has been a catalyst for software. It's not necessarily an open source 
organization like the Linux Foundation or Open Daylight or OPNFE, but it's actually, we look at software in a different setting, which I'll get into in a minute. And then finally, this should be first on the list, we are committed to collaboration and have been recognized as the organization where, we, where, where major SDN system implications and issues are going to be brought together, discussed across the organizational lines of these industry groups, standards bodies, and open source projects. Our membership has, um, has actually been around 135 or so members. I don't have the exact number uh, with me today. It's a little bit down from where it's been. It's, it's not surprising in some respects. There you go, that's another factor, and I, I wasn't even looking at that. One of the reasons I think that there's, there's a, a little different focus is that the rise of the open source projects, especially the controller projects, is ship, organizations can't be in every, organiz, every one of these groups. So they have to focus and prioritize, and now that we have a solid architecture, and Andy's gonna talk about that in a little more detail shortly, and now that we have actually the basis and the building blocks that you and the vendor community have actually provided, now we're starting to really put focus and attention on software. And if we look next door, what's going on with uh, Heather Kirksey's session on OPNFE, you'll get a better sense of how we're putting the pieces together into a broader, a broader whole. These are some of the highlights of, for the, um, the organization. There's a lot of technical activities. I'm gonna let Andy cover most of them. In, uh, in his section. Um, open source projects is significant as well. I just listed some of the key open source projects that um, we've been promoting. Atrium, there's a presentation on Thursday from the architect from the ONF who's going to describe an open source distribution of SDN for a particular application in a multi-vendor environment. Um, in, the Boulder project is about intent. Intent is the, is the way in which applications are gonna be integrated with the SDN and architecture in, in the ONF sense, but also more broadly, applications need to interact with the SDN network. And it's gonna be through an intent-based UI that's gonna span different organizations, different controller projects, different vendors, and, and it's, it's really gaining momentum, but it's a complicated problem. And then there's the real-time media interface that, that uh, is another project that Microsoft, among others, is interested in for uh, for driving additional um, application to network integration. We, in we announced the OpenFlow 1.3 certification program with many labs that span many continents, many test frameworks, very complex activity that was, has been in the works for years, frankly, and the first certifications, they're, they're mostly products that are uh, developed in China were introduced just recently. You just, over the last couple of months. And then finally, the Open, uh, the ONF Certified SDN Professional Program. You'll hear a lot more about that, and the two gentlemen in the back, uh, Doug and Marco, can tell you more details uh, about how you too can become an ONF Certified SDN Associate or Engineer. Now I wanted to, to, to go back to this notion that you know, the industry is, is really starting to, to shift the perceptions about SDN, the relationship between SDN and network functions virtualization or NFV, and then also on top of that, what, where to devote limited resources to be able to help guide the future of the industry. This is the results of a survey from a light reading organization called the New IP that I think some of you may be familiar with that looks specifically at what is the industry perception of various different groups with the ONF circled just for the, the purposes of this workshop. And again, a little bit difficult to read, but if you look at 28% of those survey viewed the ONF as very important and 42% so somewhat important, or in other words, almost three quarters of those surveyed view the ONF as important to their, to their future plans. And this is not only consistent, but the ONF actually 
scored a little bit higher than some of the other organizations. Now, we are not competing. We are extremely complementary. But the notion that we've finished our job, we've released OpenFlow 1.3 certification, we can train people, and that we're done, I don't believe that the industry looks at it that way. It's not that simple. The ONF is going to continue to evolve, to, the, to address the needs, to address our ultimate goal of promoting open SDN. And it's surveys like this that give us a, a very encouraging indication that we're on the right track. And not only that, that's the NFE who has a huge, huge positive scope. 80, 51% view SNFE as very important, and 35% view it as somewhat important. That is, 85% of those surveyed indicated that NFE is important. And that's important for us because there is no NFE, or there's going to be limited NFE without a dynamic networking capability that SDN represents. And that's why all the operators are looking at it that way. That's why all the vendors, who the major operate vendors, not are looking at it that way as well. And that's why we're here today. So you've seen this chart before, I hope. This is the three-layer SDN architecture. We've only tried to promote this about, uh, I don't know, Dan, how many times? I mean, infinite number of times. This is our three-layer architecture that represents what is a SDN. Now, when Andy talks about it, he's going to go into a little more technical detail because there's a number of other implications when we start uh, peeling back the engine and going into how we can implement this versus the functionality, which is what this is intended. But what I wanted to do is to show how we fit into the community. First of all, we define this concept of industry groups. I've used this term for about a year now. Industry groups simply are organizations that are driven primarily by network operators. And in ONF speak, when we talk about operators, we talk about data center operators, carrier and WAN, so telecommunications, cable, and so forth. And then we talk about enterprise being operators, meaning any entity that's operating their own network. We look at those three segments that I just mentioned, but there's others as well. Etsy NFE is clearly an industry group. It's not a standards body. That's by, by charter. They'll, they'll provide some level of specifications. They provide some, I'm not sure if we call them standards, but they look like standards, but they're really a group and the reason why 87% or 86% view them as important in the, in the new IP survey I just showed a minute ago is that there's 38 operators who got together in an unprecedented way representing the world's largest operators, like all of them are at the table, and they're collaborating in an unprecedented fashion to drive this initiative, which in turn, of course, is going to drive SDN as well. That survey, well, I'm talking about, Dan, this survey. Yeah, is that Etsy NFE on the bottom or just Etsy in general? No, no, well, this was Etsy NFE. Etsy NFE. Yeah. And, and by the way, in, in within less than two years, NFE became the largest project that Etsy ever had in their history, within two years. So again, next, standards bodies. These are traditional telecommunication standards. These are even IETF. IEEE, other activities. I showed some of the, the standards bodies that the ONF in particular is, um, is collaborating, with, collaborating with very closely on specific technical initiatives like the Metro Ethernet Forum, or, or MEF now, like TM Forum for telecommunications management, and like the OIF for transport SDN. One of the highlights of all of last year that we presented at this conference was the, was the, the multi-vendor, multi-operator global transport SDN demonstration that was successfully conducted with the OIF and Open Networking Foundation. The OIF, by the way, is Optical Internetworking Forum. It's, the, it's one of the leading standards bodies for transport. And those standards body, actually, I'm sorry, those standards bodies are actually now understanding that, that they can't live as an island anymore. They can't just compete with one another. They really need to get integrated because of the problem is just way too pervasive. What, what caused that adjustment? It's the industry groups whose operators are driving this. The constituents who have the most to gain are the ones who are getting more engaged, more vigilant, more involved in the overall process. That's the departure from the past. 
And then finally, the open source projects, we talked a lot about them to, to, to this date. Of course, there are the controllers that have gotten a lot of attention, like Open Daylight, like Ryu, like Onos. And then there's other projects as well. Um, OpenStack has been a, a machine. I mean, it's unbelievable that there's a thousand plus organizations. There's 10,000 people or 15,000 people in that range on the mailing list. OpenStack is its own industry. And, and actually, it's interesting if you want to, there's even organizations now that are specializing in hiring people with OpenStack expertise. It's pretty amazing. And you look at those open source projects, how do they actually interact? Well, I'm going to get into this, that in a little bit more detail. But, the, but really what this chart's indicating is, is it answers the fundamental question. Why are there so many groups? Why, why do we need to even think about a group when they have 10 or 15 different organizations on this slide? And the answer is because they're all interrelated. And they have to be interrelated to be able to pull off the transformation that this represents. So let's talk about open source. I mean, this is a big part of what the industry is focusing on. And if you look at it, no, what I want to do is share some of the not so obvious wisdom that we've learned over the last couple of years engaged with the open source community, but with direct involvement through our open source SDN projects, as well as indirect involvement through the broad set of open source projects that are really gaining momentum and making SDN and NFB happen. You know, first of all, let's look at the number of projects. Well, the conventional wisdom has been there's thousands of open source projects, but the reality is that there's millions of them. And, and, and that's pretty amazing to believe there's millions of projects, and it puts a question in what the focus is of millions of open source projects. So let's stay tuned. Influence. There, there seems to be a view that open source is an attempt from many vendors to participate to be able to promote their own approach, to get involved, but to, to do it on their terms. The reality that we've seen in most of the major projects is operators, once again, are stepping up. They're being heard. In issue, um, data points like the open, net, or excuse me, open daylight creating an end user advisory group to be able to ensure that operators are going to have a voice in, even though those operators are not the ones rolling up their sleeves and committing to the development. Operators are taking on that role. That's the reality that we're seeing in 2015. The contributors, who are they? Well, the, we, th you know, we always perceive them to be the shorts, the engineers, that individuals in their garage are actually working on the open source projects because they want to, because they get motivated by being part of the community, being successful. What's the reality for the big projects? It's the suits that are driving it. All of the open source projects that, that are involved in SDN and NFE that I can think of, I mean, the main ones being Open Daylight, OPNFE, and, and even OpenStack, they're driven by corporations that are putting up hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars of, of investment to be able to drive these open source projects, or at least contribute to these open source projects. Now, why are they doing this? Because of the operators who are motivating them and, and, in essence, changing the rules of the game. So it's really been an interesting transition to watch that. And then what, what's the ultimate goal? Well, the ultimate goal of open source projects, the original perception was, let's sign up a bunch of members. That was the idea. And that's why we see a lot of attention to open source projects who are trying to raise some investment to be able to fund the development activities to be able to engage with large telecommunication, network, enterprise networking, data center vendors who are creating that technology. But you know, ultimately, the goal is community. And if we go back to the first one about the number of projects, we, we believe and we've observed that these projects are not about just creating code. They're about creating community. And my close colleague and in, um, in in an industry fixture, Neela Jacques, is going to talk about this on Thursday during his keynote. And you'll, and you'll leave that talk with a little more conviction, because he is an uh, articulate and passionate speaker on this topic. So how does this relate back to this question? Why so many groups? Open source is important, but it, it's not o either or. I mean, if we look at the way that technology was adopted in the past. Use cases drove architecture. Architecture is driving standards. 
standards were driving implementations. And, and through some of that experience down the road, we would see additional enhancements to use cases, additional use cases that were facilitated by the introduction of new technologies. We would see a, what you expect to, to be a pretty systematic cycle. But what we're seeing now is that use cases are driving open source. So in other words, if you decide that you're going to go off to the side and write a specification that says, I'm going to create a new standard for SDN or for NFE, how can you do that given the complexity of SDN and NFE? We can't do that. So what's happening is that we started down a path to lay out some general concepts, and then we're starting to implement those concepts. Those, those open source components, like S, like a, uh, an example would be OpenStack, even though component is, is hardly serves it justice, as well as Open Daylight or Onos as a controller framework. Those, those frame, they have to be integrated together. And that was the birth of the open source software reference platform, like OPNFE next door. And you'll hear more about that later. Those reference platforms are driving architecture, which in turn are refining use cases. So we're turning the whole equation around. It's no longer that we can a priori specify the whole overall, you know, the overall arrangement in, in, in one single process. What we need to do is to have an iterative process where everything is happening in parallel, where we're implementing, we're specifying, we're engaging with operators and users who are, are trying to help guide and prioritize what they need to be able to deploy in their individual environments, which vary pretty dramatically, depending on if you're a large operator, a small one, regional, you're international, and so forth. And then we're actually going back and then iterating the process, not just through a paper exercise, but through an implementation exercise. So finally, I just wanted to share a few data points about what's happening in the industry. And I mean, do we really believe this? You know, what, what's going on? So I just went to the media. I just picked two sites. These are, these are both close partners to the Open Networking Foundation. I'm not excluding anyone else. I mean, we respect all media and, uh, and many analysts. But, you know, we look at SDX Central, light reading. You know, look at their coverage over the last year. You know, the first one from light reading, I think, says it all. Will it be worth it? And, and, and many organizations and operators believe it, like AT&T being the, the poster child for SDN and NFE. Verizon picking their vendors, lining things up, making huge moves, even investments in startups and the like. And then DT, and they want to, to go change the world here in Germany and, and around Europe and, and, and around the world with SDN. I mean, Axel's going to talk about this, I think, during his keynote, for sure. On the other side, SDN Central, with some an other analysts and vendors, got together, cooked up a, uh, a number that's, that's mind-blowing, a $100 billion market for SDN. On top of that, virtualized CPE is driving and helping drive NFE by being one of the first use cases that's actually being implemented, that there's value to be gained. And then we look at... Uh, the interesting article they wrote on Verizon where, where, like the coverage in light reading, I mean, Verizon is getting very serious about engaging with the community to create this, not going around the side. We've seen many data points by the leading, the world's leading operators that are helping drive this. And once those leading operators have made progress, everybody else gets to benefit. So I know my... Uh, Time is done. I just want to thank you for the opportunity. Welcome again.